Good morning. Good morning. To all of you who are here in church and those of you watching online, thank you for joining us today as we celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We continue our four-week preaching series entitled Surrender to Win. In today's gospel, Jesus reminds his apostles and us that true greatness does not come from our mental or physical qualities or from our possessions or accomplishments. Rather, it comes from surrendering our lives to God and serving others. Achieving true greatness requires us to die to our ego, our false self, which is constantly seeking validation, security, significance, and adequacy. It is a lifelong battle, but it is necessary if we're going to find peace, freedom, and happiness, and win at life. There will be a collection today for the retirement fund for the Archdiocese priests. Envelopes are in the pews. Please put your donations in with the regular collection. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Francis, and our preacher is Father Roberto. Please stand to receive our celebrant. Let us begin our Mass by singing number 315. And I looked on the boards, which you can do later for the rest of the songs. Either side of the altar. 315. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In Jesus placed the little child in their midst and put his arms around them. Whoever receives this child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Let us receive the one who the Father has sent, our Lord Jesus, who breaks open the word, shares his body and blood. Let us trust in his mercy as we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor. Grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, Let us beset the just one because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, 
God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. James, beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your own passions that make war within your members? You covet, but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask but do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
and brothers, the Lord be with you. Hear now a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. And may the word of God always be on our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to others, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, they shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. As you know, we had the Olympics this summer, and even though they were diminished because of the pandemic, it is still amazing to watch these athletes and to see what they can do with their bodies, right? They are incredible athletes. They are some of the greatest athletes in the whole world, and they are the best at what they do. Can you imagine the time, the effort, the sacrifice they have to dedicate to get to that level of greatness in their sport? It is a good and noble ideal to want to be the best at anything and to be willing to pay the price to achieve that greatness. In fact, Uh, I believe that God honors people who make that kind of sacrifice, who strive that much in their lives. And I would say that those desires, those efforts are themselves God's gift uh, to us. And they are important ways that we can honor God in our lives by trying to be the best. And I would also say that in, in the today's gospel, Jesus puts those efforts at trying to achieve greatness in a a, a more important, a bigger, more important context. And the context is that true greatness, what is true greatness in the eyes of God? That is the context. What is true greatness in the eyes of God? In our gospel today, Jesus, who was the greatest human being who ever lived, and who was also God, is speaking to his disciples, his apostles, about his upcoming suffering, his death, and his resurrection, which is the single greatest event in the history of our universe. 
and his disciples don't understand, they don't seem to even care. They don't pay attention. Why? Because they're too busy arguing about who is greatest among them. Don't you just want to grab them and say, would you guys please just get over yourselves? It's not about you. It's about Jesus, for heaven's sake. But as easy it is for us to blame the apostles for their foolishness and arrogance, we have to remember that you and I can do the very same thing. At times, you and I can be so caught up in our own agenda, our own egos, that we have no clue what God is saying to us, what he is doing for us, what he wants for us in our lives. Yes or yes? Yes, right? I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one here. As I mentioned last week, the title of this preaching series is Surrender to Win. And last week I mentioned we have to take two crucial steps in order to find peace, to find freedom and happiness in our lives, in order to win at life. And the first step is the absolute crucial one, to surrender our lives to Jesus. The second step I mentioned last week was that we also have to accept that everything belongs in our lives, the good and the bad, they both belong, and that God sometimes permits the bad, the evil, the sufferings in our lives because he has the power to change those things and to bring about something good from them for ourselves and for our world. Today, I want to talk about what is probably the biggest obstacle for us to find peace, freedom, and happiness, for us to win at life, for us to achieve true greatness in our lives. And that obstacle is our ego, also called our false self. On the one hand, our true self is who we are in the eyes of God. It is our deepest, who we are in, in our, at our core, our deepest and truest self. On the other hand, our false self is the more superficial image of ourselves that we often project for others to see. Like the apostles in today's gospel, our ego or our false self is always comparing and competing with others because it needs to feel superior to someone else for its own sense of worth. And that is why our false self is always asking itself, what do people think of me? What will help me look good? If you're asking yourself those kinds of questions, watch out. Our ego can be so fragile that it can spend an inordinate amount of time and energy seeking validation, seeking security, seeking significance, seeking a sense of adequacy, of being adequate. So my brothers and sisters, what I want to tell you today is that this ego, this false self of ours has to die if we are going to grow in the spiritual life. It has to die if we are going to win at life and achieve true greatness in God's eyes. It's got to die. For our ego, greatness is so often about physical or mental abilities, agility, it's about our possessions, our accomplishments. And just think about how many people in the world are considered great because of any of those things. Now, there's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with uh, physical or mental attributes, possessions, or accomplishments. But way too many people make them the ultimate focus of their lives, the ultimate, the ultimate measure of greatness and so we have to be careful. So what does Jesus do in today's gospel to undermine that kind of misguided and superficial mindset? Jesus places a child in front of his apostles, a little child whose physical and mental abilities are not even fully developed yet. 
a child who has little or no possessions whatsoever, a child who has not accomplished anything significant in the world yet. Jesus is brilliant and he is very sneaky. What Jesus is telling them by this simple demonstration is that true greatness, a true sense of our worth and our security, does not come from any of those external things. Rather, Jesus says time and time again in the Gospels that our true greatness, our true worth and sense of security will always and only come from God. Only from God and from who we are in God's eyes. In other words, it's not what we look like, it's not what we possess or what we have accomplished that's going to make us great. It's who we are in the deepest and truest part of ourselves. Our true self is who we are in God, nothing more and nothing less. Once we realize that, there's nothing to prove or to protect or to argue about. Trying to figure out who is greater or better makes absolutely no sense. I am who I am in God, and you are who you are in God. And there's, so there's no need for us to compare, to compete, to jockey for position My true greatness has nothing to do with you or any other human being. My true greatness comes from who I am in God. It's that simple. So, does this mean that we cannot strive for greatness in our lives in other ways? Certainly not. Does this mean that we cannot or should not compete in school, at work, in sports, in politics, or in other ways in our lives? Not at all. But what it does mean is that we put all those efforts at achieving greatness in perspective, into that bigger context that Jesus gives us in today's gospel, the context of true greatness. So we strive to be the best, not in comparison or in competition with others, but simply to be the best that we can be. That's what counts. We strive to utilize the gifts, the strengths, the talents that God has given us for our own good to a certain extent, but most importantly, for the good of others. Our true greatness comes not by trying to be better than others or trying to make them somehow less than we are, but in serving others and in loving them and in raising them up in some way. And that is exactly what Jesus said in today's gospel. If anyone wishes to be first, they shall be last of all and servant of all. As I said last week, if we want to win at life, if we want to find peace, freedom, and happiness, we have to surrender to Jesus. And a huge part of surrendering to Jesus is giving to Jesus, surrendering to him our egos, our false self. The reason for that is that the false self does not want to surrender to anyone, not even to God, because more than anything else, our ego, our false self, wants to be in control. If you have to be in control of your own life, if you have to be in control of your loved one's lives, if you have to have things work out the way you want all the time, you have ego issues. you got to let go. You've got to let go. It's a lifelong battle to let go of our ego. But as we do so, we will realize that it frees us from wasting so much time and energy feeling inadequate, insecure, comparing, competing, protecting, and validating ourselves by doing more, by having more. As we surrender our ego, our false self, we can simply rest in the security of knowing who we are in God, in God's eyes. That's what counts. So, yes, try to be the best you can be. Try and strive for greatness, but not the greatness that your ego craves for and demands. 
strive for the true greatness that comes from surrendering to Jesus, from dying to your ego, the true greatness that comes from serving others. My brothers and sisters, surrender your ego. Surrender to be truly great. Surrender to win. Each time we profess our faith, we are winning. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And each time we raise our prayers to God, We are winning over our false self. As Jesus tenderly puts his arms around a child in today's gospel, so he embraces each one of us in his love, and he listens to our prayer. For the grace to die our false self and find our true greatness through surrendering, surrendering to Jesus and serving others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of church and state, that they might give example by humble and compassionate leadership in caring for others, especially for the poor and vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from an overblown ego and for those who feel inadequate and unlovable, May they be enlightened by the Holy Spirit to see their true selves and their true worth in God's eyes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings upon the Archdiocese of Los Angeles as we celebrate 250 years of Catholic faith this year, may we continue to bring the love and goodness of God to all those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who continue to suffer from the pandemic, natural disasters, oppression, and injustice, may the Lord be their rock of refuge and may countries work together to overcome these evils. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For Javier Leos, for the eternal repose of his soul, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions in our book of intentions and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we come before you as children, humbly recognizing our need to surrender our lives to you. Please accept us and these prayers which we make in your name, Jesus, our Lord, forever and ever. beloved brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you love in him by whose in your son by whose obedience we have been restored the gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience and so lord with all the angels and saints 
we too give you thanks as in exaltation we proclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, in memory of me. The mystery of faith As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread for the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death 
you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed ever-Virgin Mary, the mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather, all, uh, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, at this Mass we especially lift up to you, Javier, Layos, and this week we said goodbye to John Snyder and also um, Victor Aliasso um, recently died, and, um, and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us turn to one another and all also on live stream and let us share the sign of the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ to everyone. Peace of Christ. 
peace of Christ. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Not worthy. Ruth, but only say the word. The act of spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there embrace you as if you were already and unite myself wholly to you unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separated from you amen
Let us pray. Graciously rise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Throughout the United States, this Sunday is called Catechetical Sunday. It's an opportunity as the school year begins, a new year of ministry, to recognize and bless those people who serve as catechists. Catechists are teachers, they're the religious education workers, leaders of Bible studies, all those who do something in leadership to uh, bring God's Word, to bring the church's teachings to others. So if that pertains to any of you here, if you're a school teacher here at our school or in a Catholic school, if you um, are a leader of a Bible study, if you work in our religious education program, please stand so we can offer a blessing for you. Anybody here? Okay. Anybody else? All right. Okay, we got a few. Anyway, all right, so I invite the rest of you to extend your hands towards these people as I say the prayer. Loving Father, we pray today for our catechists. We thank you for their generosity and dedication as they serve your church. Grant them your wisdom that they may grow in the understanding and teaching of your word. Fill them with your grace so that they may be fruitful heralds of your word and lead others to love you. Pour forth your Holy Spirit upon them to grant them wisdom about what is important, knowledge of the truths of the faith, understanding of their meaning, right judgment about how to apply them in life, courage to persevere even in the face of adversity, reverence before all that is sacred and holy, and that loving zeal which leads others to a transforming encounter with your Son. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord forever and ever. A round of applause. Thank you so much. Our, our other announcements this weekend, once again, we're going to be having a bilingual healing mass, and it will be on Friday, October 1st. We had to move it back a week later. Last week, we announced it as the 24th of September, but there was a conflict, so we're moving it to October 1st, Friday night, 7.30, here in the church. We will offer the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, so for anyone who is sick or injured or coming, um, um, going to have a, a surgery or something like that, please come to that mass. Father Francis continues his grief support group on Wednesday and will continue for the next several Wednesdays. For any of you who have lost a loved one, it's just a wonderful idea to support each other in that loss. There's more information in the bulletin today. As well as for our Monday night Bible study, again, a great idea to come together to explore, study, pray with, and share God's Word. So important for us to do that. And it's great if we do it at home on our own, but it really becomes even more powerful when we do it as, uh, as Christians 
in a group in, together. So please look at the bulletin for more information about the Monday night Bible studies. And don't forget, this Saturday we have our Color Run. It's a fundraiser and a social event to bring together our parish and school communities. And it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have food there, hamburgers, hot dogs, that kind of stuff. And there's pre-sale food tickets in the parish office if you'd like to buy them. But the main thing is that you support me because I'm going to kill our principal. I'm going to run her into the ground. If you are a school family here, do not support her. You're going to support me because I'm the pastor. So make sure you do that. <laughs> now, don't tell the principal I said any of this stuff. Okay, don't tell her. <laughs> Finally, we need volunteers to help cleaning our church. There's a, a small group of really dedicated parishioners that keep this church clean. They come on Wednesday mornings, and I don't know about you, this is the cleanest parish church I've ever uh, been at. So they do a great job, and if you can help them, even if it's once a month, just do, do it uh, to, to help them out. Just sign up uh, in the office, call the office, and, and let them know that you can help out. Wednesday mornings, they do a great job. Okay, thank you so much for coming to Mass today. Thanks to all of our ministers for your generous service week after week. The Lord be with you. The peace and blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Oh, in peace.